Well, boys, good, bad, or indifferent, the Seahawks were not afraid today. They were not afraid. And even if I didn't like this pick, I would be giving them credit for that. So 56 came and we couldn't find a trade partner. And I will admit we probably tried to trade down. Don't get me wrong. I think we tried. But we were not afraid to go ahead and make that selection. We didn't force a trade down. We just went with it. We may only have three picks this whole draft. We were not afraid. So I got to give credit to the team for that. Even if I didn't like this pick, I appreciate the willingness to just go ahead and use it. So that being said, I actually do like this pick and I want to talk about why because I have seen a pretty wide range of takes on this pick. This is not like last year when I saw almost all negative feedback about the pick. Uh, Dwayne Eskridge, wide receiver out of Western Michigan, number 56 overall. I saw a lot of Seahawks fans who were excited and happy and on board with it, and I saw a lot of Seahawks fans who were very down on it. Some of them wanted Terrence Marshall. Some of them wanted a different position altogether. Um, th there was a pretty wide range of takes in the Seahawks fandom, I think, on this one. So I'm going to go ahead and explain why I like it, and then I'm going to get into addressing some of the negative things that have been said about him so far, because there have been a few, and I think some of them have some validity to them, but I think they're being overstated. So Dwayne Eskridge, first, before I dive into really talking about him, one thing I want to say, he was not on my big board. I have to admit to that. He was not on my big board, and some people may think that he wasn't because I didn't like him. Not true. Not true. I didn't have him on my big board because I thought Shane Waldron wanted a bigger receiver. I thought Shane Waldron wanted a six-foot or more receiver. That's clearly not the case. If that was true, he would have just taken Terrence Marshall or Deami Brown, but he decided, or, you know, through the team, he had some say in this decision. He must have decided I'd rather have Dwayne Eskridge. So clearly size is not as big a deal for Waldron as I thought. So right then and there, I'm going to say that is not a strike against him that I did not have him on the big board. Okay. Here is Dwayne Eskridge on the Draft Network, which is my favorite draft website right now. We've got a scouting report here. I'm going to go ahead and read it. Dwayne Eskridge is a former defensive back that transitioned back and forth between the two positions due to injuries on the roster and other players transferring from the program. That's more interesting than it is good or bad, but interesting is good, sometimes. He had high-end production despite not being able to settle into a position until his final season. Eskridge is a well-developed wideout that has the mentality of a defensive player. That's not something you see said very often about wideouts, I feel like. With strong hands and a seasoned root tree, he's capable of playing on the inside or outside. Both those things should excite you as a Seahawks fan, because we don't know where exactly we have a need at receiver. Is, is Lockett going to play in the slot, or is he going to play on the outside? So either way, it seems like Eskridge can uh, carve out a nice niche here. Niche here. Also a mainstay on special teams, he's a prospect that will be on every special teams unit, not only as a returner, but as a hustle man on both kickoff and punt groups. We need more return men on this team. Right now, the only guy on this team who seems to have any amount of dynamic ability to return a kick or punt is DJ Reed, and we may want to protect DJ Reed because he's going to be a starting cornerback for us. So don't be surprised if Dwayne Eskridge is at the very least the starting kickoff and punt returner in 2021, and he should be very good at it. A vicious and high-effort run blocker, he has bone-crushing blocks on the perimeter and doesn't take plays off if the ball isn't in his hands. I spoke briefly about how I thought that Shane Waldron would want wide receivers who could block well, and it seems like he got one in Dwayne Eskridge. I think that the ability to block as a wide receiver is something that will be heavily valued in this offense. And the fact that every scouting report I've read says that he's a very good blocker is really encouraging to me. All right, so now let's take a look at his PF, uh, sports reference page and sort through some of the things that people are saying about him in the negative. The first thing that I see said about Dwayne Eskridge is that he's already 24 years old, which is a little older than the average rookie. Most of them are 22 they can get as young as 20, 
and 24-25 is kind of the oldest. So this guy's on the older side of things for a rookie. Now, here's the thing. That's a little bit of a stumbling block when it comes to the later part of his career. Because he's already 24, yes, you may see him only be able to have an NFL career for 10 years instead of 12 years, but are we really going to grandstand over two years a decade from now that he may or may not be able to play well in? Like, that point seems a little silly to me to exaggerate. It's a valid consideration, but are we really going to be mad if Dwayne Eskridge is great for us and then has to retire after 10 years instead of 12? So, I have to push back on that one a little bit, I think. The, the concern I have with an older rookie, players who were, who were drafted when they were 24 or 25... The concern I have with those guys is that they were already fully physically grown in college, and that's why they looked good. So basically, somebody like, uh, God, we've had many examples in Seattle over the years. I think Cassius Marsh was an example of this. They're older than their college competition, so they're more grown. They've already maxed out their physical attributes in terms of strength and size, so they're just able to dominate their competition just because they're bigger, but that advantage goes away when they go to the pros because they're playing against people who are just as old or older than them and have also physically maxed themselves out. So that's the concern that I have when it comes to drafting an older player. Dwayne Eskridge is not like that. His game is speed. Dwayne Eskridge's his game is speed. And we have seen that speed compared not just to his college opposition, but also compared to a stopwatch. And he's just playing fast. Dwayne Eskridge is one of the fastest players in this draft. He ran a 4.3840, and he did it in the rain, apparently. If it was not raining, you could very well have been looking at more like a 4.35. And I know 40 times get overblown in this day and age. I understand that. But if you watch Dwayne Eskridge play, play, he looks about that fast. He has pads speed. He can outrun anybody. And that's not just the opposition he played at Western Michigan, which I will grant you was somewhat substandard. But with his ability to just plain run, he can outrun NFL defenders as well. So I'm not worried about the age, and I don't think you should be either. All right, let's get down to his stats. And this is the next concern that some people had for this pick. He never had a season of more than 800 yards. Well, as I just kind of went into, he did have a little bit of an issue in college when it came to where he played. His team was forced to play him at cornerback on a couple of occasions, more than a couple, actually. You can actually scroll down here. You can see his defensive stats down here from when he actually had to play a little bit of cornerback for the... Uh, Michigan, Western Michigan school, and look, last year, 2020, the dude played in six games and had 768 yards and eight touchdowns. The production, to me, is not a real concern here. Even if you were to hold that against him and say, why didn't he have any big seasons in these first three or four years? Just look at what he did in this last year, and don't let it worry you so much, okay? He would have had probably at least 1,200 to 1,300 yards and 12 to 15 touchdowns had he been able to play a full season. So the production concern to me is overblown. The only concern about this player, Dwayne Eskridge, that I have seen that I think has some real validity to it and did give me pause is that he's probably going to struggle against press coverage in the NFL. These cornerbacks are going to get up and play physically with him. He may not have, he, excuse me, he may have issues beating that. Okay, that seems like a valid concern, a valid hole in his game. Physical corners can get to him. But let me bring something up here. What did we not do under Brian Schottenheimer that everyone else seemed to do? Scheme wide receivers open. What did Shane Waldron presumably learn how to do when he was being groomed under Sean McVay in L.A.? Scheme receivers open. That's what the Rams do, right? They scheme receivers open. 
So what can we logically assume that Shane Waldron will be doing a lot of now that he's come here and gets to call plays after, what was it, four years under McVeigh? Scheme, receivers, open. Ideally, Eskridge isn't going to have to beat a lot of press coverage because we're going to be putting him in motion a lot. We know the Rams like to do that. Um, and hopefully he won't have to deal with the press coverage stuff. Hopefully he'll be able to move around pre-snap and get into situations where he gets a free release off the line and get schemed open. So press coverage, not going to be a big concern there. And given the fact that we made a big hullabaloo about bringing in a new offensive coordinator this offseason, I would hope that it's something like that. So those are the main points of concern that I've seen about Dwayne Eskridge from Seahawks fans. The production, the age, the press coverage stuff. Some of it has some validity, but I think a lot of it has been drastically overstated. Uh, hopefully my reasons why made sense. Now, as for where this pick can succeed, like I said, the dude is fast, and he's not just fast for his opposition. This isn't a guy who runs a 4 4 5 40 who just blew the pants off everybody in the, in the MAC conference. This is a guy who legitimately might have 4-3 speed. Um, I don't think he's faster than Metcalf, but it's possible. Again, 4.3840 time in the rain, if that's true, is legit. Um, I think that he's somebody who can get open quickly. He runs good routes. He seems to be very fluid in the way he, he moves. No wasted motion. He's got good hands. That was another thing I saw in some of the scouting reports about him. And, as you can see, Western Michigan did use him as a jet sweep receiver a few times. So that seems to be part of his skill set as well. Nothing huge over here. Nothing compared to somebody like uh, Emer Smith-Marset. But they did use him in that way. And I expect Waldron to do that as well because that was a big part of the McVay offense. Jet sweeps. So, that's just offense. Special teams, you can scroll down here. Last year, he became the starting kick returner for Western Michigan in six games. He had 17 returns for 467 yards and a touchdown. Uh, didn't return punts in college, but don't be surprised if he ends up doing that in the NFL. And that seems to me like somebody who could easily be a plus kick returner. So speed kills, guys. Speed kills. And this guy seems to know how to use his speed. He's not just a track runner who doesn't know how to translate his speed into actual NFL production in actually getting open and making plays on a football field. He's a very natural runner in the process of playing football. And look, this is Waldron's first year. This is a big year for Russell Wilson to prove the haters wrong. This is a great way to make sure he has no excuse to get him a talented, capable, and above all, freaky fast receiver with the second round pick. So yeah, I know there are a lot of Seahawks fans out there who didn't like this pick. I understand. I get some of the criticisms, but I think they're overblown. And at the end of the day, look, at the very least, this guy should be a legitimate deep threat. And as much as Shane Waldron's probably going to change the offense... Russell Wilson still has one of the best deep balls in the league. We don't want to get away from that too much. So if Eskridge can go deep and catch maybe 10 long shots from Wilson this year, hey, that's a contribution. And I also, bottom line, this guy should start as a rookie. This guy should start and contribute as a rookie. And by start, I mean be the number three receiver. And Freddie Swain might have been good enough to man the fort at number three wide receiver, but this guy has talent above and beyond what Freddie Swain could ever be, just because of his speed. All right, I'm going to get out of here. See you guys in stream in a bit. Peace out. Go Hawks. Those are my thoughts on day two of the NFL draft. Um, definitely coming back tomorrow to analyze whatever we do on day three. But you're not going to get me to feel down about this pick, guys. I know some of you are, but I am up on it. And that is why.